Welcome, everyone. I am so glad that you're here and that you're tuning into a conversation that I have been really excited to share. Frederica Benny joins me today, and we are going to be talking about a topic that many of you have expressed interest in, destination weddings in Italy. Frederica is the owner of Frederica Benny Event Design, a company specializing in destination weddings that creates beauty all over Italy and worldwide for clients looking for bespoke, high-end, and exclusive design and planning services. Frederica's creative process plays a key factor in ensuring a spectacular and lasting impression on her couples and their loved ones. Drawing on her former experience as a business consultant, Federica is considered one of the best and most sought-after wedding planners and designers in Europe, whose work has been seen in brides, Martha Stewart weddings, and more. Federica, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to The Wedding Destination. Thanks to you, Molly, and thank you for having me. It's such a honor and a pleasure to be here with you to share everything. Uh I am thrilled to have you here, Frederica. <laughs> you have such a unique ability of really creating a world of dreams, both for your couples and their guests, but also for all of us lucky enough to follow your incredible work. And I'm really excited for our listeners to get to know you. So before we talk all things Italian weddings, can you tell us a little bit about how you got your start? It was quite by chance, I can tell you. I was a business consultant, as you said before, and I stopped working for a couple of years just to have the time to concentrate on having babies. And when I decided to go back, I just realized that there were many international people getting married in Italy. And I had a passion for English language since I was very young. So the idea of combining... <clears throat> working in such a beautiful industry and being able to use the language that I've been you know, learning for years was really attractive to me. And this is how I started actually getting, you know, information about, you know, destination, about international couples, expectations. And I started by doing editorials. Of course, you know, it, I never, you know, tried to, to tell the world that, you know, I was posting pictures that were not where my work when they were not. So I started doing editorials and that was really interesting because I could just put my creativity in what I was doing, showing people, you know, what I could create for them. And this editorial work actually was was really interesting also because I did with international photographers and wanted to work with international couples days gave me a lot of visibility in the wedding industry. And I tended to work with international calligraphers or bridal designers. And, and so, you know, little by little, you know, the, the name spread around and it was really, really exciting. And I, I really enjoyed that because I could create a lot of work and I had so much stuff actually to show. And then I got passionate for the art of designing and styling and looking for materials and combining colors. And so this is where my, you know, my passion came from. And I can tell you that being a, a consultant for small and medium enterprises before becoming a wedding planner was really helpful because my mindset is process oriented. And when you organize an event, you just you know, manage a process from the very beginning to the very end. So this really helped me a lot in the, in the growth in the business. That's incredible. And it sounds like you really approached creating your business with a lot of intentionality. I think the fact that you, you know, you started doing these editorials, but also that you were very strategic about the creative teams that you would pull together, that you really started building a international network from day one of creating your business, which Absolutely. I think is kind of unusual for a lot of people. I think oftentimes we gravitate towards those who are right around us and maybe we become the specialist in our you know, small community and then grow from there. But for you, you really saw that creating this international 
network and relationships in a genuine way would be the right way to really work with those type of clients that were having the international events that you felt like would be the perfect fit for you. And it seems like even that background that you had as a business consultant, really making that strategic choice makes complete sense with seeing the artists that you have developed into and the work that you're creating now today. Yeah, you know, I don't have huge marketing skills, but the basic ones actually that I've learned when I was at a university really teach me that when you want to do a job, you have to understand who's your client, who's your ideal client. And if my client is abroad, I have to get visible abroad. And I know, you know, social media now, especially Instagram, that <clears throat> is the platform that I usually use most in, you know, trying to advertise my work. It's so worldwide, you know, uh, developed. And if you want to reach international clients overseas, and of course, this is easier if you can get into networks, as you said, of international professionals and creatives. And, and I like re building relationships, I can tell you. Even for the pleasure of having a spritz or a coffee or just a, a chat on Instagram or on Zoom, just to know each other. And so and you know, when I talk to my clients, I always say that working with beautiful human beings is a must for me. And of course, building relationships is what helps me to to understand who are you know the persons that I want to work with that I want to put you know at my client's service. And yeah, international networks is what actually helped me to to spread probably the name a little bit faster. If you think that I started ten years ago, only. But the kind of relationships that, that I've built with all kind of creatives from floral designers, photographers, calligraphers, bridal designers, it's incredible. And these what really make me feel rich in my business, apart from my clients. Also, the network of people that I've been, you know, knowing during the past few years is really a great, you know, fortune for me. That's amazing. So for you, when you were doing these editorial shoots, were there any or one specific shoot or even wedding that you feel like really kind of took you to where you were wanting to go and a shoot or an event that you did where things clicked in place and felt like this is the type of event I want to do. These are the type of people I want to work with. And this is what I want to create. Uh, not specific people. You know, I've been doing editorials with really high-end photographers in the past and I was feeling really blessed and actually at the very beginning I was saying oh my god do they really want to work with me and they they did they wanted to work with me and what actually we created was really amazing I don't have any particular how can I say preference I'm very selective when I have to pick up the vendors and I'm very selective also when I have to work with clients, but not because I'm a posh wedding planner, but because I truly think that I might be the ideal wedding planners for some kind of clients and not for many others. And there are clients that are ideal for me and some others that I don't. So there's no something specific. All the projects that I've been through have a big you know, place in my heart. So I can say, you know, the one that I prefer most to every everything that I did, actually, I would do it again. So it was really, really, it was really good, actually, and exciting. And I really got beautiful memories and, of course, beautiful experiences. I've learned a lot during the, these years. I have refined my way of working, my way of approaching the clients, my way of doing design, so it's a, it's been a growth for me during the years, but no specific preferences. Every every kind of you know relationship that I've built with clients or vendors is is special to me, and every project that I've been doing, I'm quite selective also in terms of you know kind of events that I do organize, and the the factor that um, moved me towards a project 
before in a, apart from another is not the you know the money that I earn just because the most important thing for me is to create something beautiful and timeless and memorable for the clients and so being selective is necessary sometimes I love that. I think that is so true. And it sounds like for you, really from day one, you were really intentional about the work you were creating and you were really intentional about the relationships that you cultivated and that, you know, genuine desire to connect and to form really lasting relationships has just taken you so far in the 10 years that you've been in business. And so in those 10 years, you have designed beautiful events from Rome to Lake Como to California. And I would love to know, how do you approach the wedding planning and design process, given that really, A, you're working with couples who are often completely across the globe from where you are, and that you're working in locations that are really varied and also at times quite geographically complex? Yes, some some places are really hard to work at. Amalfi Coast is one of them, and the logistic is incredible. But when you have a team of vendors that you can rely on, everything is easier. And this is, you know, the force of having a team of people supporting you and they are part of your team. Well, the approach is very simple. I hear the voice of the clients first. So their desires, their vision, the expectations that they have are what actually moves me in the design process and planning process. So we go through several aspects that are organizational, logistic, our design and tastes of the bride and groom, colors they like, colors they don't like, you know, what they expect actually they um, they guess to leave, the kind of experience that they want to, you know, deliver to the guest. And everything we build little by little, starting from scratch basically. And every project is different from the other. So I get inspired by the place, by the colors. Of course, I have to be in the right mood sometimes. And, you know, design doesn't come out every day at the same time, in the same way. Sometimes creativity is a little bit, you know, asleep. Some some other times is so, so, you know, well spread. But basically, yes, it's a process. I don't follow schemes. You know, sometimes clients ask me, do you have checklist? And I don't have checklist. I mean, I know exactly I have, of course, a list of aspects that we have to deal with. But for me, are the routine. And the pandemic teached us to be quick. And what I usually tell the clients is we have to secure the main vendors very quickly because the industry has become crazy because people are inquiring because venues may be all booked up. So we have to be quick. And I don't have any problems actually dealing aspects like looking for photographers, videographers or venues, floor designers at the same time. A very quick, if I can say quick, wedding planner. So I tend to be absolutely very responsive. This is what actually I ask my clients back. But the process is very natural, has to be very enjoyable, has to be joyful for them. And they have to experiment, you know, being into the process is not only me submitting, but especially this year, I've been into projects where the brides make some research and send me inspirations and we discuss about them. It's a very collaborative process. It has to be like that. And the important thing is to have since the very beginning, a very trustful and respectful relationship is what I always tell the clients. You have to get positive vibes when talking to me the first time, because if you have any little doubt, don't do that. But the process is really smooth and they get excited and, you know, you make them explore and you make them discover aspects of the wedding, especially in the design that they didn't think about. And they really get excited and you can understand from, you know, their appreciation. They appreciate, you know, how deep I go into details and they like it because, you know, it means that their wedding is going to be unique because of the little details that we create together and that they make it be different from any other kind of wedding. And especially it must be an event that express their personality. 
they, you know, they couple. Several couples I had in the past couple of years wanted the event to be an expression of the couple. They wanted the guests to, to immediately understand that that event was their event. And so this, you know, means that you have to listen to them when they express their vision, their desires, their ideas. It has to be their expression. I mean, it's not what I usually say to my clients. It's not my event. It's your event. So you have to trust me because I might give you suggestions. I might make a sort of consultancy to you if something is not, you know, good enough, not nice enough, it's not matches, it's not cohesive, it's not matching the design. But of course, in the end, you know, you have to please them. And I can tell you that I'm very fortunate to have clients that are on my same, we have the same tastes. And probably they looked at my website portfolio and they got in touch with me because actually I was expressing exactly their idea of design of you know timeless setups it's it's a really beautiful actually it's a really beautiful relationship that we build together and you feel it since the very beginning when it's something so deep and so good that's amazing. And I think the fact that it's such a collaborative process with your couples, as you said, just adds so much richness to it. And I'm curious specifically about when you're working with them, and I'm sure some couples come to you probably already with a venue or a venue in mind, and some come to you and say, I want to get married in Italy. And that's really all that they know. And you probably have people in between those two spectrums. So how for the people that maybe are wanting to get married in Italy, but they aren't sure exactly where yet, how do you go about the process of narrowing down the venue and the location? They might have some preferences in terms of mood. So one of the first uh, questions that I submit is, which is your favorite environment, your favorite, you know, architectural style? Some of them are very minimalist, are very contemporary. Some others want to have a timeless, romantic, classical wedding, so they think of, villas with frescoed walls and Italian gardens and some others want some kind of environment which is more minimal or some of them want to have sea view or lake view or hills view so depending on their taste is basically we narrow down the kind of locations in other situations the search of the location is based on how many beds how many people they want to stay at the same place where the events will take place or the spaces, the number of guests that they're going to invite, not they expect they will attend the wedding, it's one of the factors that sometimes make them tell, you know, okay, this is not the right venue for us because the spaces are not big enough and we can't risk. So there are several factors when we, and consider that in Italy we have so many different types of venues. We go from villas, from hamlets, little farmhouses or masserias or the typical Sicilian, you know, venues. And so there's so much variety of places. So probably we can just accommodate, you know, all kinds of desires of kind of requests in terms of logistics and in terms of, you know, style of the place where they're going to have their event. So, and some of them, they fall in love with some venues and sometimes, you know, they have, Get gotten in touch with the venues and um, sometimes it's a hard work when you have to tell them it's not ideal the spaces are not good enough we're gonna struggle you don't have a place to set a plan b it's not pleasant but you know if they hire me they have to be willing to get suggestions and to get good advices and what actually i have realized during the past few years because i send out a customer service questionnaire after the wedding and so what I realize is that the guidance is what they're looking for. And of course, if you hire me, you have to be ready to be guided through the process so that the process is enjoyable, is smooth for you, but of course is effective. 
because mm-hmm. you know you I, have to well yes. spend your money so if i give you some suggestions it's not because i want you to waste your money i want you to well spend your money and you know i'm i don't get commissions from the vendors so and i don't have a percentage on the budget so basically if they spend 100,000 euros or 300,000 euros it doesn't change anything on my side but we can have good stuff to to make something beautiful and of course you know we have to be creative but we have to be cost effective you know the allocation of the budget is really important but i don't have this kind of scheme that sometimes you know i was used to look at when i was browsing around the web at the very beginning when you say okay 20 percent of the budget has to be allocated on the venue every couple has their priorities some of them they want to spend ninety thousand euros or us dollars in photography and videography some others they don't and they want to spend more money on flowers and i do respect actually their vision and their necessities and their priorities so you know, when I was telling you, I don't have specific checklists or schemes. I'm a little out of the borders sometimes, but I find more effective and, you know, creating a productive to have such an approach that is built just around the clients and just around their wish and desires. It's totally so it's fine. very much a bespoke process throughout the entire wedding for every couple, which is incredible. And one thing that you said to me, which really I think stuck, was that your clients will often or almost always have very, very similar, if not the same taste and style as you. And I think that's interesting. And I think that really to me, so much of that goes back to when you were first starting your business and you were very intentional about creating these editorials. So from day one of putting your work and your vision out there, you were the one that was controlling it versus if you're just taking different events here and there, working with different couples that you know inevitably have wildly different styles – your work will be as such because you're working with couples that are completely different. But you were very intentional about putting your work out there, showing what you wanted to create. And to me, it seems like that has just perfectly brought you to this place where even though you're working in venues that are wildly different, you can still look at a photo and almost immediately before you even see your name on it, know that's a Frederica Benny wedding. And I think that <laughs> as an artist, that's what we all aspire to. And you know, I think you really are known for such a refined and elegant style. So I would love to know, how have you kind of honed and refined that signature style of yours and what inspires you? At the very beginning, you know, I had to come to compromises with clients. You know, you're all brand new to the work and you don't know, you know, which is the best approach. And in 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 the years to come, you realize that you have a focus, so you don't get any projects on board. But all the projects, they have to express the client's desires, the client's vision, but they have to make me be able to express my creativity. Well, the inspiration that I've been taking lately is from fashion and from design, interior design. So if you see my Instagram, I follow a lot of floor designers because I love flowers and when clients come to me and say well the venue is so beautiful we don't need so many flowers and I always tell them that we have to be to have a good balance I don't you know I don't want to force you to spend a fortune on flowers but you know good balance is what actually makes everything cohesive and you know beautiful but I can tell you that fashion and interior designs have have inspired me a lot and you know the the work of the world of textiles the world of ceramics or i'm fascinated by calligraphy by you know different kind of papers and materials and silks so there are several sources of you know inspiration for me 
And even when I design editorials lately, I always tend to, not that I'm, you know, tired of a wedding approach, but I love the idea of giving a wedding inspiration, wedding inspiration editorial, a very fashion orientation. Something that has to be glamorous, that has to be unique, one of a kind. But it's, again, I think it depends on what you think your ideal client is. And so when I do design editorials for workshops, of course, the, the focus is what's the goal of the professional that hires me? What do they want to get? Do they want to reach you know, high-end clients? Do they want to show that they can work on Lake Como and create that kind of magic you know, that maybe the villas on Lake Como can represent for foreign clients? So the inspirations are from several sources. But again, I think that behind every project, there's a goal. And in case of clients, is their dream, their vision, and in case of professionals, is what kind of goal they want to achieve by creating an editorial, shooting an editorial, or having a floral workshop or photography workshop. So yes, basically this. That's amazing. And, you know, I think you're lucky enough to live and work in a destination that artists and creatives and gentlemen and gentlewomen travelers have journey to really since, I mean, the dawn of civilization today and has been a huge source of, source of creative inspiration. And for you, you're living there, you're working amongst it. It's such a part of you. And I mean, for a lot of people, they consider Italy to be one of the, if not the most spectacular and popular luxury wedding destination in the world. And you know, from getting married with a view of the Grand Canal inside of a Venetian palazzo to celebrating with loved ones by the sea in Sicily, there are so many one-of-a-kind wedding destinations in Italy. What do you think makes having a wedding in Italy so special? Oh, several things. When I think that when foreign people come to me, they have come to Italy first. Some, some of them, they have got engaged in Italy. So Italy, it's the place of beautiful memories, reminding them, you know, the very first start of their love relationship. But in Italy, you can have beautiful scenarios, beautiful landscapes, amazing food, amazing wine. And food and beverage, for example, is one of the, of the must for my clients. Most of international clients I have, food and beverage is truly important. And of course, in Italy, that you are in Tuscany, that you are in um, on the Malfi coast or in Sicily, the food experience can be one of a kind. I think, you know, the climate, the people, there are several, several aspects. Um, but again, I think that in, in our country, you can find different possibilities. So people that are more artistic or more inclined into 18th century atmospheres, they can find villas. People that want to have something more countryside or rustic or bucolic, they can find beautiful hamlets, you know, spread in the Tuscan countryside or among the hills. And if you want to be by the sea in a place, you know, where everything is olive grove around, you can go to Masserias in Puglia. We have, you know, several possibilities to offer to the clients who are coming from abroad and getting married in Italy. But I think, you know, it's a mixture of things. So, and many of them have come to Italy before. Yes, so they, they know the country, they have experimented the food. And so they want to have the same things, the same emotions, this, and to share the same experience with their guests. Uh, yes, I completely agree. I mean, I have been fortunate enough to photograph many weddings in Italy, to travel to Italy on vacation even more times. And, you know, it's just somewhere that the more you return to, the more that you discover and unearth. And it really is a one-of-a-kind wedding destination. And for you, Frederica, so I know that you have planned weddings all over Italy, but that you've also planned events really in some of the most exclusive venues in Europe and around the world. What are some of your favorite wedding destinations, whether in Italy or elsewhere? I have a few in my bucket list. 
that I have not worked out. They are around the world. I'm very fascinated by Bali. And that's one of my my goals for the future. Um, there are places all around the world, like Hamangiri, or many, many places. It's, it's difficult to, to, to make a list and to say which is the first one. But places like, like Bali, like, you know, something on a beach or a castle in France, for example, or the beautiful places in Provence in south of France. There are a few that I'm I'm looking at actually and I'm following on Instagram. In Italy I have a few places. There are places that I haven't worked at and there are places that I go on submit to my clients because they are amazing because the service that the clients can get is high end. The people that work there are amazing and collaborative and supportive. I can say that, you know, there are a few places. All the places that I would be working at are my favorite ones. So I would work there again and again. And there are places that I've been working at several times or that I'm working next year after five years' time before the pandemic. So, you know, there are so many beautiful places in the world that are in Italy or in France or in in Asia or in the United States as well that I'm, you know, exploring sometimes. And I think that, and I really hope that the future actually will bring me somewhere else apart from Italy and all around the globe again. I've been working in Los Angeles and in France, and I remember also the, the one in Los Angeles as one of the most beautiful experience that I've done. But in that case, I had a great team of vendors. I had a, amazing clients. And a beautiful project sometimes is made by people that are clients or vendors. The place is, is amazing, but if you work with the wrong people, every kind of place is awful and it's a nightmare. I so it's a mixture agree. of beautiful place and beautiful people. Yes. I know the exact wedding you're talking about that you did in California. It was absolutely stunning. And I think we all are very hopeful that you are able to work in some of those incredible destinations because we would love to see how you bring your really distinctive vision and style to these incredible destinations like Bali, like Amanjiri, that are so unique and distinctive and different from Italy. And I think that's one of the most inspiring things as a artist and as a creative is being able to explore these new environments and create in them. And it really pushes you. And I think for a lot of people, they look to you, Frederica, kind of going back to your editorial work. So I know that even though you are at a place in your career where you're you know, really one of the top wedding planners in Europe, you still take the time to create editorials. Oftentimes creatives, I think, will hire you and you will work on designing editorials for workshops. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? It's a service that I decided to offer before the pandemic spread. And just because design is one of my favorite parts of my job and putting together, you know, a concept and putting together a mood board and exploring and making a mood board growing, you know, with new ideas, it's so exciting. I usually tell clients that come to get married that if they don't look for a designer, I'm not so interested in doing coordination only or planning only because, you know, design is the part of my work where I can express myself and I can express their vision and I can make it come to life. And it's so, so exciting. I love planning. I mean, I like planning, but I love design most. So I decided that basically it was interesting and it was exciting and good to, to offer this kind of service. And I've been into a couple of three workshops actually and with international photographers. And I have designed editorials for one-on-one -on -one for photographers that wanted to have a builder portfolio in Italy. And it's so, it's so good because the team is really small. It's like a small wedding. 
you recreate a small wedding. And what actually I tend to do when I do design editorials is I never say to the world that a tablescape is from a real wedding, but it has to be the kind of design that shows exactly clients what they can get. And for in this particular case, when I do design tablescapes, if I can have long ones, even for editorials, I really love that. Because, you know, you can design a four-seat stable, a six-seat stable. It's not the same. You don't give the clients the idea of what they can get. So, and actually what I do tend to tell creatives that work with me, we have to get all the stuff that can be um, an accessory, that can be invitation suite, that can be a bridal dress, where we can get them focusing on the project. So, for example, if I need to have something really impressive, when I did design the editorial for an American photographer and we had this fashion editorial in, in Como, we, I wanted to have something really impressive that had to be one of a kind. And I found these haute couture dresses in Israel. So I think it's important, if possible, to source things where you can find them, that is also on the other side of the world, but they are perfect for the project that you are realizing. It would be quite a shame to to give up, you know, opportunities and, you know, vendors and items just because they are too far, because, you know, you have to pay for transportation. And what actually I say to all creatives, I work to have a wow effect. So when people see the pictures that you shoot of the sets that I have created, even when we have to find models, modeling for us, we have to get the wow effect. The industry is quite saturated. There was a time when there were so many editorials going around, so, so many. And I think that if you want to be distinctive, you have to get out of the overall crowd of professionals and creating the wow effect is what actually people have to, you know, to focus on. And so my idea is we have to create the wow effect. So when people get on Instagram and scroll the pictures, you know, down and see your pictures, they have to say, oh, wow, this is what actually I want to get. And I'm telling creatives that this is the way actually of creating an amazing portfolio that is different from all the others. because. It, you know, there's space for everybody in this industry. So there's spaces for all the planners, all the photographers. There are so, you know, many destination weddings. So there are hundreds of people getting married, thousands of people. So there's work for everybody. But if you have ambitions and if you want to, you know, get out of the crowd of people, I think that being distinctive and being unique also in the projects that you put together, it's really essential. That's amazing. And, you know, Frederica, I know that it can be very difficult for people to plan an international editorial shoot. So, I mean, it's not only such an asset for them to have your knowledge, to have you be a part of their team, but I think what people don't often realize until they're actually in the process of doing it is what an incredible opportunity it also is to really meet you, to get to know you, to get to know this wonderful team of creatives, whether from Italy or elsewhere that you bring together. And I think that is often the real value that you can get out of an editorial too. Of course, you get this beautiful work that shows the type of clients that you want to attract, but also having the chance to work alongside you and some of the amazing creatives that you pull together internationally. What a wonderful opportunity. You know, one suggestion that I can give to all creators out there who wanted to create portfolio in Italy is it takes time. Like it takes time to organize a wedding, it takes time to organize an editorial. And it takes months to me to, 
to create, to explore the venue, to get inspirations, to look for the perfect vendors, to look for the perfect materials. It takes time. And so when in the past, a couple of photographers came to me and one month before the date saying, you know, I will be in one month, I will be in Italy. Why don't we put together an editorial? One month is not enough. If you want to put out something really, really unique, it takes time, like it takes time to organize an event. So it's the same kind of process that has to be really deep in searching because everything has to be perfect. I'm a little bit picky when it comes to, you know, cohesion of details, colors. And it takes time actually to put together the, the best vendors, the best materials, the best dresses, everything, you know, has to absorb the, the necessary quantity of time to be developed. So, so this is a suggestion that I can give. If you have to plan an editorial, take time and do start working on that at least three, four months before. I completely agree. And, you know, using that intentionality and really taking the time to create something different is what is going to give you the most inspiration and the most return on your investment and on your time and on your creativity long term. Um, so going along with that, I'm sure there's a lot of wedding creatives who are listening to this right now, Frederica, and they are wondering how they would ever have the opportunity to work with you. Do you have any recommendations for wedding pros in general on how to create a relationship with a planner and get onto, quote unquote, the proverbial list? Well, get in touch with planners. I do answer every professional that gets in touch with me, that is a floor designer, that is a band, that is a photographer. I'm very respectful. And I think that everybody has to be considered, has to have a chance. So I don't have any limitations apart from styles that they might have different from the one that I would submit to my clients. But as I said, you know, every project is bespoke. So I might need that kind of professional because my clients would like to have something that they can provide. So get in touch. You know, if you are in front of the right person, and it's so beautiful actually to, to build relationships that maybe maybe you don't work with them for ages and then it comes a time when you have a chance to to submit them to your clients. So get in touch, write, write emails. I answer everybody and I've been told by many professionals you know, thank you for answering me. I mean, it's the minimum that I can do, you know, answering emails. You know, they took the time to write to me to present their work and to introduce themselves. So it's absolutely important. It's so I feel so blessed, actually, when people get in touch with me. Because we are a team. What I always say to clients, the vendors are a team. I would never do anything without my vendors. I can have the most beautiful ideas in my mind, but if I don't have amazing vendors shooting, taking the perfect shot, creating the perfect floor arrangements, my ideas are nothing, are really useless and with no value. So I'm really well open to receive, you know, messages on Instagram. Uh, I got, I just answered a band actually today, a roaming band from UK, And they send me, you know, price lists. So I collect actually a lot of information about new vendors. Absolutely. It's so beautiful. I think it's so beautiful to to build up relationships. And you can get enriched by people. But as I always say to my clients, a professional has to be talented, skilled, high-end, but has to be a beautiful human being. And this is what actually makes me select and be selective (laughs) with vendors and clients sometimes. There has to be good vibes with the vendors as well. Oh, completely. We are a team. We are a team. There's no superstar. What I always say, I don't want to work with superstars. 
I want to work with people that are enthusiastic of the work they do. They put their effort to have a beautiful result, a perfect result, to please the clients and to be supported with each other. This is actually what an amazing event is made of. I completely agree. And you said something interesting, which you mentioned how, you know, these relationships, I can't stress enough that they do take time. And I mean, you may have somebody that reaches out to you that you start to form a relationship with. Maybe you don't end up working together in person for three, five years, but And I have been in that situation myself countless times. And I can say how much sweeter and how much more joyful of an experience it finally is to be able to collaborate together after having formed that real friendship and relationship over the years that when you come together, it creates, just like you said, that amazing energy, that amazing vibe, and that amazing team, which really I think that in the end is what makes a wedding truly spectacular is when everybody comes together. And I think that that's often something people don't think about is they feel like, you know, if it's been six months and they haven't had an opportunity that it was maybe, you know, it was reflecting negatively on them, but it's not at all like that. Good things just take time. Yes. And, you know, I just to to make you understand how important relationships are. In the past, I've been meeting photographers, floor designers, international ones, just, you know, coming around for a coffee, or for a pizza, or just to spend a couple of hours at the beach with me. And it's so important to me. This is what actually building this kind of connection with people it works, makes you work so well in the future, maybe, if you have a chance to. Um, so, yes, get in touch. If you have wedding planners that you're interested in working with, just get in touch with me, you know, introduce yourself, introduce your portfolio. So it, it's so it's so important, actually. Connection is in, essential. And if there's someone done answering Don't mind, you know, there there are so many that you can get in touch with. So you will find an opportunity. And such great advice. And, you know, what an incredible opportunity. I think today it has been for our listeners to learn from you, to get to know you, Frederica. This has been so much fun. And I cannot thank you enough for your time today. Thanks to you, Molly. I think it was, you know, when you wrote to me, I was so enthusiastic. And chatting with you, we had chatted in the past, but being able actually to share, you know, experiences and tips is so, so important. And I do believe a lot in cooperation and in collaboration, even with wedding planners. It's something that I really believe in. So not building a relationship with other professionals, but also in my same industry, the, you know, wedding planning industry cooperation and support um, being supportive and help each other is so so good so if I can share tips and knowledges and references I don't have really any problem to do that that's incredible and Frederica I know that probably many of our listeners already follow you for all things beautiful weddings in Italy but for those who may have just met you where can we follow and learn more about you many many people that are clients are professional they follow me on Instagram I find that this platform is one of the most effective to get in touch, to be visible and to, you know, show a little bit of yourself. Probably it's the most genuine, you know, platform that we have. So yes, the website, there are some clients that they Google and they find me, but many, many professionals, they get in touch with me through Instagrams and many couples, they start following me and then they get in touch and it's so so beautiful. It's it's a very we we live in a worldwide you know where technology is so helpful, and I would say that Instagram yes it's the the tools that people you know get in touch with me through. Fantastic. And what's your Instagram handle? It's Federica Bini underscore ed. Fantastic. This is my professional. I have. Not a private one. I have Federica Bene Design where I I was supposed to share places and pictures of venues, but the work is so hectic that I focus on the main Instagram profile 
trying to feed him every now and then. Um, yeah, amazing. And I can attest that following Frederica is like diving into a rabbit hole of beauty. So if you don't follow her already, I would highly recommend doing so as soon as you finish with this episode. Frederica, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story and for joining us here on The Wedding Destination. Thanks to you, Molly. And just good luck for your podcast. I'm sure it will be so great and successful. Thank you.